Hi everyone, um, this is just following the on um, from the video before part one of um, people that have passed over and losing loved ones. Um, I wanted to speak about how after that experience of sensing um, the boy that had committed suicide in the bathroom, it was like just something opened up inside of me and it's like somebody told the other side of the spirit world that they should come to me and I could hear them and see them and that's how I experienced it was going outside, sitting by the pool, going into a supermarket and seeing people that had passed over, hearing them. I was quite overwhelmed as you know I didn't know what to do and I spoke to my mom about it I mean I was frightened that I didn't know what type of spirits were around that I could see I didn't know whether they were good or bad um, I didn't know if they could hurt me I wasn't sure whether I should help them I wasn't sure what to do my mom said to me that if I felt uncomfortable or I didn't get good vibes I should tell the spirit go away three times and I did that um, and I found that that worked and so I found a way to be able to turn on the ability to see people and turn it off um, which helped a lot and then I went on to um, use the ability to be able to bring comfort and help people that have lost people um, I found it really you know, one thing that really touched my heart was people that, so often when people die, we don't expect it. If they're elderly, then we do and we can prepare ourselves. But like me with my father, it, when I was 10, it was a complete shock. So communicating with people that have passed over um, with, with their loved ones helps facilitate being able to say goodbye in a way that they weren't able to before. Um, it's one is able to have closure, um, to reconnect. And I think one of the biggest tragedies for me is that there's so many people that think that once you die, that's it. You know, that they've lost their loved ones, they cease to exist and just poof, they're gone. And I, I was one of those people, actually, until I was 25. I just thought, you know, there's no point in crying over spilled milk. You know, my dad is gone. It hurts so badly, but there was nothing I could do about it. So I should just suck it up and, you know, get on with life. And I never had a photograph of him around. I never spoke to him about anybody. I just thought what's the point you know he's gone he's gone no amount of talking is going to bring him back no amount of pain is going to bring him back and i realized that i i didn't handle it the right way you know because i didn't know better but knowing what i know now the people that we've lost that love us and our ancestors they don't go anywhere they you know they don't see all the details so you don't need to feel all anxious when you're doing what you shouldn't be doing or that they see all the finite details they they don't do that but they they literally watch over us and protect us and are there for us so there's times where we all feel deeply isolated and alone and i am here to tell you that i promise you those times that you feel alone you probably have about 10 ancestors, some you know, some you don't know, watching over you, guiding you, protecting you. They are there. And now I, I put a photograph of my father up. I, um, I don't often see him or hear him, but I talk, I talk to him because I know he's there. And I have a different understanding of crossing over and dying and death that really is just a transformation and people often ask me well what is on the other side when you die what's there you know and my experience of this is 
I've been with people um, that haven't been well, that are in the process of dying and crossing over. And what I've um, quite often seen is about two days before the person is about to die, um, their ancestors and loved ones from the other side start to come down into the bedroom and to facilitate helping that person to cross over like a meet and greet on the other side. Um, often people that are dying will point to those people and say, oh, so-and-so is here. But the people that are around them, living in their bodies, start to think that the person is kind of going crazy, you know, either getting dementia or they're not lucid because of drugs. Um, but I've seen them, um, the person that's passing away and the people that are coming down from the other side to collect them. I've literally seen that. And so the closest thing that I can understand, I mean, I know a little, is I, 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 I'm, I feel like I'm touching on a fraction of it. So this is by no means a, um, a full encounter of what goes on on the other side. It's just a tiny bit that I've been privileged to see. And um, the closest thing that I can explain it is that when we dream, I think nature's kind that way. Nothing is a shock to the system. It's everything that we experience, we've kind of experienced in some way before. And dreaming, I, I feel, is the closest thing to the transformation of how it feels on the other side to be a spirit. When we dream, we feel as if it's real. Um, we feel that it's happening. But when we wake up the next morning, um, we know that it's just been a dream. But it felt so real at the time we never used our bodies to do all these things, but in the dream when we were using our bodies, it felt real. And I feel that that's the same when we pass over to the other side. We're in a dreamlike state of many different layers and consciousness, and we don't have a body and we don't have a voice, but yet we experience ourselves to have a voice and a body. Um, we still experience ourselves as existing. Um, so that's all I could kind of say about that today. But, you know, this kind of thing, I'm not sure who wakes up in the morning and says to themselves, you know, one day when I'm big, I'm going to communicate with angels and I'm going to be a medium for people and um, I'm going to talk to people um, that have passed over. I mean, this certainly wasn't... Um, the intention that I had for my life. You know, I was looking at more grounded options. At one point I thought I'd be a lawyer or a psychologist or a doctor. I never thought that I would do this at all, at all. So throughout my life, as I'm getting older and older, these gifts are opening up more and more and more. And there are times that I've tried to run from it. You know, I'm a like um, a reluctant medium. It's not something I wanted, but, you know, I feel within my heart, I've, I've given up, I've surrendered, because I know that I'm supposed to do this, and I kind of known when I was younger, always, it was clearer then, I knew that the certain things that were happening in my life that were for a bigger purpose, um, that it wasn't just to suffer, that that pain and that suffering would be used as a vehicle to help others and you know we're all different I mean no, I don't I believe everyone's equal you know I wouldn't say because I have these gifts I'm special or anything like that I mean I, I just have them and there was a time I really didn't want them at all but I embraced it it's there and I've been given these for a reason and I try my best to be able to use these gifts to be of service um, and to help people, to bring them closer to the people that they've lost, to know that there's no loss at all. It's just we change shape and to try to help people to see that we never lose the people that we love. They change shape. They lose their bodies, but their soul continues forever. And I try and help people connect to their ancestors, connect to the people that they've lost, connect to their friends, and in the same way, lose their own fear of one day dying. 